I salute this house with the awesome and the blessing words of grace, mercy, and peace. May they be multiplied unto you in this place. To the leadership, to the bishop, to the apostle, I salute you, man of God and woman of God, with the awesome and the blessing words of grace, mercy, and peace. May they be multiplied unto you, to the pastors, to the elders, to these pastors, to these elders. And I'm even going to speak prophetically in the next dimension. Every other pastor, every other elder, every other evangelist, every other prophet, every other teacher, every other minister. I salute you with the blessing words of grace, mercy, and peace. To my brother in the gospel, Pastor McCraft, salute you, man of God, with the blessing words of grace, mercy, and peace. May they be multiplied unto this house. Amen. But for those of you that have the word with you, and I'm going to not be before you long, turn with me to the book of 1 Timothy, chapter 4. 1 Timothy, chapter 4. Once you found it, please signify by standing on your feet if you can and say, Amen, man of God, I've got it. First Timothy chapter 4. And I want to pay close attention to verse 12 through 16. Amen. First Timothy chapter 4, 12 through 16. And I'll be reading to you from the standard King James Version. Amen. And what the scripture declares, it says, Let no man despise thy youth. Come on. Come on. Okay. Y'all leaders should have already got y'all shout. Yeah. Right there. Because the, the man of God says, New. <laughs> Let no man despise thy youth but be thou an example of the believers in the word in conversation in charity in spirit in faith in purity till I come give attendance to reading to exhortation to the doctrine. Verse 14, neglect not the gift that is in thee. Oh, brr, let me roll that back. Neglect not the gift that is in thee. Let me say that one more. One more again. Neglect not the gift that is within thee. Okay. Which was given thee, watch this, by prophecy with the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them that thy profiting may appear to all. Yes. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and save them that hear thee. If I had to give a title to rest in your cerebral. It would be living empowered as God's gift. Living empowered as God's gift. Speak that in the atmosphere if you can and give the Lord a hand clap and you may be seated in his presence. Living empowered is God's gift. Now, sis, you know, I, I get comfortable, comfortable with folks. I ain't scared. Okay. Okay. So now, 
As the Lord began to deal with me in preparation for this significant event, God began to give the word into me, download it to say, hey, I've got something for leadership to empower them versus this just being another episode on the back channel that somebody just did something significant at one moment in time. God is trying to get you to the next dimension but in this God said this is a word for the leaders to empower them but we're also believing on God that every other person in here sees themselves in the same position because we are all part of the same kingdom. And understand, until we get king in our dome, we ain't getting in the kingdom. Okay. 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 Okay, let me... Okay, so, so now in that, God began to deal with me and said, these are the things that I need to have deposited, especially in you leaders, as you've just had a new level given unto you. Even though you are already there spiritually, the world needed to have a physical manifestation because, you know, things happen in the spirit first. And then it transcends into the natural. Many of you have heard me say over and over, you a spirit with a body, not a body with a spirit. So if you a spirit with a body, there's some things that has to happen in the spiritual dimension of yourself in order to have a physical manifestation. Okay. Okay. So now in saying that, he says, let no man despise thy youth. If I can just begin to give you some revelation on that. The scripture begins to speak empowerment to the reader or the one who is hearing it. It says, let no man despise thy youth. But watch this. In order for you to not let any man despise your youth, you first got to not despise yourself. See, you've got, you've got to understand people. If there's something that goes on in your life, thank you, man of God. If you've got issues within yourself regarding yourself, we seem to have some kind of anomaly with ourselves that anybody can say anything to us and then you begin to see it as yourself. See, understand, don't let your friends prophesy your future. Everybody that says anything to you does not have the anointing to identify who you are. It begins with you in the anointing of you. So, so the only way somebody going to despise you is if you see less of yourself. But I believe the God that I serve. Oh. So he says, let no man despise you. In this season, understand this. The scripture talks about your youth. Let no man despise your youth. Now, let me, let me, let me, let me take y'all in. Because even though some of you are thinking in the natural, you're saying, okay, don't let nobody despise me because I'm young. All right, when you look up that word uh, uh, youth there in the Greek, it also applies itself to being new. Okay. It's shot by somebody. Every leader that's sitting here, you just had a new moment. The man of God talked about you being new, but the thing is, here, un un understand this. See, why you thinking about you being new? You was already old. Oh. You was already this. We're just taking the time to remind you of who you are in front of everybody else. So you wasn't as brand new as you thought you was. The only thing that makes you new is how folks see you. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, so now that folks are seeing you because you've been mantled with something else, right now, don't let that be your demise. Okay. 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 So he says, but be thou an example. Be thou an example. Then it turns around and says, of the believers. Okay, now, 
watch this. If, if I'm talking to the family, because you've got to understand, even when we looked at the writings of the apostles of the New Testament, notice that they say, grace and peace may it be multiplied unto you. All right? And they would say, articulate to the brethren. So watch this. I've got to make sure nobody's lost in the sauce. This book is only directed to family members. So when you get this, it's only family that will be able to digest it. Y'all know what I'm saying. Because y'all know even when family do what you don't like family to do, you still don't lose bloodline. You still... Okay, I ain't trying to be too deep tonight. I just, I just want to get y'all somewhere. I want to get you somewhere. Okay, okay. So the scripture says, but be thou an example. If you're going to be an example, especially all of you leaders, what it means is to be a model. It, 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 it means to structure yourself. All right. Now, even when you go look up the word example in the Greek, it also means to imprint or to be a stamp. If you are to be a stamp, then when you become an example, there's no, there's, there's no point of return. Okay, bro, let me say that again. <laughs> Whatever you become an example of, there's no point of return. Once you begin down the path of what you're trying to... Because understand, the word talks about you being perfected. If it's talking about you being perfected, it's meaning about you being matured. Right. See, some still got it twisted in their theology or their philosophy. Everybody think, well, nobody's perfect. Jesus was perfect. But you got to understand the word, the word perfect means to perfect or to mature. So sooner or later, you got to grow up. If you grew up in the natural... I, I hope I ain't... I, talking over somebody's head in the natural if you grew up and the world said you could have a driver's license and drive a car the world said that you could buy a house then apparently the world has an identity of what maturity is but unfortunately the kingdom don't have what maturity look like in the spiritual okay 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 we am trying to watch time okay Okay, okay, okay. So, the word says, be an example of the believers. And I know some of these leaders, Bishop, have, have understood. Whenever the word of appears, it means from. Okay? Every time you see the word of in the scripture, especially when it's applying to an individual or individuals, it's referring to being from. So when it said be of the believers, it says be from the believers. What are the believers? All right. What are the believers? When we, when we look in the Greek, the word believer or to believe comes from the Greek word pistis, which means conviction. All right. So when it talks about a person, it's pistos, which means an individual is convicted about what they believe or what they do. If I'm going to be an example, watch this. It requires the equation of conviction in order to see that thing through. See, like mama used to say, if it's hot in the kitchen, get out. But see, in this season for kingdom folks, you can't jump out the kitchen because sooner or later, the heat is going to catch up to you. And if I understand some real stuff about the priest, when I go and look in Malachi and it talks about the priest, then it talks about them having to be amalgamated. They have to go through some fire in order to get them to the perfected form. See, understand, if you are living sacrifice Okay. 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 Let me keep it. So as the believers, as the convicted ones, the scripture says, watch this, in word, conversation, charity, spirit, faith, and purity. Now, Bishop Apostle, one thing that I found very interesting is if you do mathematics, there's, there's six different things that's identified. And when, when I understand prophetic, especially numerology, all right, then I understand six is the number of man. So the scripture really gives you what are those things that's working in you that's got to be worked out? If I get these things in order, these are the things that keep me as the believer. Okay. Okay. Y'all got quiet on me. 
It's all good. Tough room. So now, the first thing it says is for you as a believer to be an example in word. Okay. The word for word in the Greek is logos. Many of you are familiar because we always associate that with Christ. But we never associate it with what comes out of your mouth. Okay. Okay. The scripture is implying for you to be an example, not just of what you read, but what comes out of your mouth. The word that's here is talking about what is the dialogue that you're producing in this realm. So as I tell everybody, in order for you to preach or teach about the Logos, you got to know how to Lego the Logos. Some of y'all think about waffles right now. Okay. Can I touch? Okay. Understand, when we, when we talk about Legoing the Logos, under, understand this. The word Lego is the Greek word for speak. So watch where I'm going with this. If I Lego the Logos, then what it does is whatever is past written becomes present active. And it becomes future perfecting. <laughs> So every time that I speak the Logos, it ain't 2,000 years old for me because now it becomes my present active and it speaks to my future perfecting. Uh, oh, okay. Okay. So if I'm going to be the example or the imprint, then everything that I speak should be perfecting me and speaking to somebody's future that hears me. Amen. Amen. I should not have rogue words in the atmosphere that I speak. Because if we are to be God in the earth, y'all yeah. 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 some scripture readers, John 10, 34, Jesus said, isn't it not written that you are gods and scripture can't be broken? He referred to Psalms 82, 6 that called you a God in the earth and the children of the most high. So when I get my identity together, then I can begin to tell the universe what to do. Then I can be the Joshua's that I've been called to be, or the Yahshua's bringing a salvation into this dimension. Right now, there's some interstellar things that's still waiting for the God in you to speak, but you haven't been ingrained or stamped with the characteristics to mind the words that you speak out of your mouth. We still talking around here as kingdom folks. I can't stand so and so. Well, could it be that you're speaking the curse in the atmosphere that eventually you can't stand because you have not? Okay, okay, okay. Y'all have to understand this. If you're going to be leaders for the kingdom, even the prophet Samuel, the scripture said, no word fell to the ground, meaning i.e. nothing that he spoke was worthless. If it's going to be worthless, the scripture declares about what folks call evil. See, folks think that evil apostle is what people do and don't know that it's an emotion that activates your wicked activities. So why do you think the scripture tells us to bless folks other than to cancel out? Because blessing means benefit. Yes. So while folks are evil, they feeling they ain't got no self-worth. So somebody got to make them feel like they worth something. That's why every word that comes out of your mouth is significant to change things. You don't know what other gods that represent God will be activated in the earth realm just because of what came out of your mouth. Okay. Okay, where we at on time? Let me, let me be obedient. Okay, so it says also in conversation. Now let me discombobulate you because conversation here is not talking about what you speak. Conversation here is talking about how you act. Come on. Okay. The writer is telling you you can't be two-faced, i.e. you speak one thing, but your body do the actions of something else. 
So the scripture begins to declare to you, one, if you get your words together, because notice, I believe God is a God of order. If he talked about the word that come out of your mouth, then your words should speak to your actions. So your actions should be conjunction, junction, what's your function? I'm going to be connected to the prerequisite, which is the word itself. Okay. 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 All right. So, so now he doesn't even say in word and in conversation or your actions. Then he turns around and he says in charity. Okay. Let me make sure they got this straight. I think charity is love. Okay. Watch this though. Notice that the scripture didn't say love, it said charity. Why is there a significance in that? Other than the fact, if anybody knows anything, once again, about the Greek, there's two different words for, for, for love. There is agapeo, which is in correlation with another individual or something. Okay? But the word that's used here is agape. Agape is adoptive to being uh, 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 connected with friends or family. So it doesn't imply a direct relationship of intimacy per se between two people that have now become one. It talks about the family. So if I understand what the word is telling me now, it tells me that I first got to have my language together in order for my actions to be together because what happens is folks that's my family see what I do. How do they become my family other than the fact that there's something that I do that they like seeing? So if, I, if, if I'm claiming to be kingdom, if I'm claiming uh, to be in the example of one that ain't ashamed of my youth or my newness in God, it requires me to have some things together, even for family or folks to connect up with. Okay. 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 So then it says in spirit, in faith, and in purity. So as it talks spirit... We're talking about Numa, which is your soul, in faith or your conviction, and then in purity, which requires you to live your life to be sinless. It requires you to live your life in holiness. So I'm saying, these things are given to you in order for you to put them in order. If God is a God of order, you have to understand, especially as leaders now that have now been collared and so forth. There's certain things that you have to put in order. Even as with the songwriter used to say, order my steps in your word. So, so there's some things that, that we're missing because we don't have order in what we're trying to do to live for God. But the thing is, we've got to be empowered. And the thing is, what empowers me other than when I have order of empowerment? Okay. The writer turns around and says, Till I come, give attendance to reading, exhortation, to doctrine. Okay, so now, Paul is talking, and he says, When I come, make sure that you're paying attention. Okay, y'all missed it. Make sure that you pay attention. Okay, y'all still ain't got it. Watch this. Attention has a price. So if I'm going to pay... Oh, okay, okay. If I'm going... I have to understand that there's a price in the order of God. I can't think it's going to be simple... Because order has a price that goes along with it. 
So if I'm going to pay attention, there's something that is required of me that's out of the normal. See, even when we talk about tithing and offering, people don't know that it's, it's really looking for you to do something out of the ordinary. Because when you do something out of the ordinary, it makes it legal for God to do something out of the ordinary for you. But until you do something out of the ordinary that requires a price to be paid, then some things are not going to come because, once again, it's an illegal transaction in this realm. Okay. Everybody all right, right? Where we at on time? I want to... Okay, okay. Okay, so, okay, at least I can get to the power board. verse. Verse 14, neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy with the laying on of the hands and of the presbyter. Okay, this is the good verse. It says, neglect not the gift. Watch this. Okay. When you go look up the word gift in the Greek, it comes from the word charisma. All right, charisma means divine influence, but it's also the same word in the Greek for anointing. Okay, let me roll that back and read it to you again. Neglect not the anointing that's already in you. See, because understand this, you don't have to have the anointing to be given to you. You just have to have it come upon you. Okay, y'all remember Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Upon means up and on me. So every one of us, since we came from the DNA of him, already had the anointing. It's just a sleeping giant waiting to be woke up. There is nobody here that came from God that does not have the anointing. The thing is, we don't exercise. It's just like people don't exercise the prophetic. They don't put it into practice. They just say, ah, that's hogwash. And don't, don't understand, apostle, even on a day-to-day -day basis, we still using the prophetic. If I tell y'all, I see y'all tomorrow at the cookout and I'm there, wasn't that prophetic? Come on. Come on. The world has downplayed what you have the authority to speak and be empowered to do in this realm. You're not giving it the credit that it should have as kingdom kids. We think it's only exclusive to certain people to have the anointing. But what it says, that's why it says neglect not. Don't miss it. Don't let it pass you by. Don't let it sit in the box unactivated. Don't let it just be there like a looky-loo. Don't let it just sit there and nothing be poured into it. Don't let it just be like a transformer and nobody plugs into it to get the source. Don't let it just sit there and be dormant. So he says, neglect not the gift that's in thee, which was given thee by prophecy with the laying on of hands and the presbyter. Okay. Everybody was looking around as we were laying hands. But notice that the scripture said it was given to thee by prophecy. So, so, so even in that, somebody had to be the prophet that began to speak a thing over things. Even though we could be the prophet walking in the mantle, I told people many times we should be our own best prophet. If won't nobody else prophesy for you, prophesy for yourself. If you're a Bible reader and you believe what the scripture says, then you begin to speak these things into existence for yourself. We're required to operate in a revelation. 
not manifestation. So when I got the revelation of who I am and what are the dimensions of what was in me, we read Ephesians chapter 4 here earlier tonight by the pastor. But the thing is, even in Ephesians 4, you can't jump to verse 11 and pick up on fivefold ministry. You've got to go back to verse 1 through verse 11, past verse 11, and you begin to see uh, that the fivefold ministry ain't nothing but the DNA of Christ. And if I claim that I belong to Christ and I got Christ in me, why are you sitting there denying every dimension of the fivefold that's already in you? If you deny it, then apparently somebody lying that they got Christ. Okay, okay, okay. 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 I think... Okay. Okay. So... We're there of time, right? Amen. Amen. So I'm going to leave that alone. I'm going to leave it alone. I'm going to be obedient. I'm going to be obedient. Amen. Because even, even, even Samuel said, obedience is better than sacrifice. So prayerfully these words, even in this, gives you some revelation that you began to be empowered. Not just as leaders, but as kingdom people. All of this belongs to you. It's just a thing of you walking into what is already predestined for your identity. Amen? Amen. Amen. Give it back into the hands of the woman of God. Hallelujah. Crazy, you need a mic for three minutes. <laughs>